All right. We are here for the latest episode of the Thunder Pop Show live. Live right here with you. And next to me virtually, now the one and only Chris Cassidy. Ladies and gentlemen, in the Thunder Pop Dome virtually. How the heck are you doing, Chris? Doing pretty great. Glad to be here. Excited to talk about the subjects to talk about. Woo! Yeah! Listen yeah, to my adoring. Got some applause there. Hey, if you could have something over you while you're talking, applause is what you would want it to be. I would hope so, yeah. Drown me out with it. Probably better than what I'm saying. Just give me your adoration. <laughs> Don't listen pour to it. me. Pour it on. Pour it on for sure. Chris Cassidy here from Geek News Now and Vase Productions. Uh, as you can that see is there, correct. down his name there below. Uh, we've got a fun show tonight. Now, I don't remember what episode number this is, but who the hell cares? <laughs> Does anybody care? Um, I was keeping track, and now I'm not going to watch anymore. <laughs> I think I think it's 148. Okay? Don't quote me on that. Ooh, where's that applause button? Yeah. That's so impressive. As I give myself self applause, I will. I'll no, take it where I can get it. <laughs> that's that's for you as well, because you've been on. You know, at least now you've been on at least three. I think we've done three of these together. With- yeah, I'm proud to be a friend of the show of Thunder Pop, just as I'm always glad when oh, we can get man. him over on News Now. Oh, it's always an honor to come over there with you all, and I've had now a few of you all over. Um, I love love having people over from the Geek News Now family. Uh, on this episode with Chris, coming up on Thunder Pop, we're going to talk about the streaming wars of 2021. An update on the streaming wars: who's losing, who's winning? Who- it sounds like a movie that was made in 1990. 2021, the streaming wars. Just no one would have thought uh, like streaming actually meant what it does. <laughs> yeah, they would have had. It would the streaming it would, wars. What the rivers aren't good enough for you? You gotta go for streams. What's that? Oh, what a wild future we live in. Violent uh, rivers fighting each other. Damn science fiction it's, authors. The streaming I, I, wars of 2021 left the earth river. barren. <laughs> oh no, it was terrible. It's terrible. Coming this June on sci fi. Streaming on now. Sci- no, on the sci fi channel. With starring Jason Priestley, Streamy Wars, Sharknado 9. It's, but they're a real thing. No, they're a real thing. They're, they're a little different than River Streaming, but they are violent and they are brutal. And there have actually been casualties already of the Streamy Wars. We're going to talk about that because it's, it's, it's easy to, to forget. It's easy to forget that there's already been a couple of casualties of the Streamy oh, yeah. Wars. I'll tell you one right now, Quibi. Uh, I remember what uh, I'm a huge community fan uh, the show community the yeah. last season of that season six premiered <laughs> on Yahoo video or the oh, Yahoo yeah. streaming for yeah because that was around for about as long as community was and then that was gone that was an early victim early yeah I remember you know it's kind of like starting any other business for me a streaming a st- starting a streaming business is like starting a business. If you don't have a plan in place ahead of time, and that's kind of like what I feel like with Yahoo, uh, also with YouTube Premium, which will be the other casually recently of the streaming wars, they had one big show locked and loaded and ready to go, and that was Cobra Kai. But then what in the hell else did they have in their library? And that's why, you know, out of the gate, HBO Max and Disney Plus have done so well because they're they have those those uh, those libraries the ips very strong ips and libraries so we're gonna get into all that we also gotta have a clip and we're gonna have a thunder take to start the show after the intros we're gonna talk about jj abrams who might have an impact on the streaming wars let's face it he could he already actually he does have an impact in the streaming wars because he's involved in two different streaming platforms in uh creating content so he's 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 battling with himself that's, that's kind of <laughs> weird. No matter what, you always come out on top in that situation. Yeah, you have a better chance. You you give your odds are raised when you have. It's money you on. against you. No matter who loses, you win. You have 
money he's on playing multiple it, yeah, <laughs> yeah like a fox <laughs> yeah so he's yeah exactly that, that jj leave it to jj to come up with that anyway we're gonna have a thunder take on jj abrams to start the show then we'll get into the continuing the discussion on the streaming wars of 2021 and and maybe we'll pitch that movie the rivers fighting each other to sci-fi uh, they can they can do it. It's gonna be a crossover event with Sharknado because it involves water. I was gonna say that's got to come together. We've now we've got <laughs> it's a uh, it's turning it's, into a mini series. Now no, it's, it's a trilogy. Yeah, no, we've got to. <laughs> I'll have a treatment worked up by Monday. All right. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll have the produ <laughs> first production meeting uh, Monday. We'll let, we'll do that. Uh, we won't live stream the production meeting, or or maybe we will because content is king. And if we think we can make that into some content, we'll do it. Then we'll have agree or disagree, thoughts and advice, the usual tropes. Chris Cassidy, you can find him, by the way, at YouTube, at Geek News Now, correct? Geek News Now. All you have to do is search Geek News Now. And if you, that's where I'm doing most of my, like, this kind of related stuff, reporting on things, talking about current, like, pop culture and stuff like that. Yeah. I do have another channel. It's a Vase Productions. I'm Vase. Yeah. Uh, and that's where my original channel was. That's a lot of my personal stuff. I do a lot of gags, a lot of jokes, a lot of reactions to comedians. That's what's making it huge. And so I just keep doing whatever people ask me to do there. But Geek News Now is where you can find more of the geek stuff, you know. And then yeah. It's a Vase is just personal reaction stuff. So. Yeah, it's it's kind of more of a wide. You throw the net out further, right? It's kind of what you want to do, what you personally want to do. Well, like Geek News now, you know, it's I'm in charge of the entire YouTube channel. I have people mm -hmm. under me. They have different shows. Yeah. It's for as wide an audience as we can make it. And you know, I when I'm working as a representative of Geek News now, I try to keep that in mind. I try and act a certain way, behave a certain way. With It's a Vase, I'm pretty much just this character, Vase, which is, I'll rant about things, I'll rave about things, and it's mostly just, like, catharsis for me to, like, get it out of my body, and sometimes I'll make crazy cartoons, and people will be like, why are you making these things? And I'm just like, it feels good for me. Like it's good And then it actually ended up blowing up from just me watching comedy videos, mostly George Carlin, and I laugh and people are like, that's great. Can you react to this one? And I'm like, when I first started, I didn't understand reaction videos at all. I'm still not entirely sure I do, but if people keep asking me to make them, then I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> it's good stuff. In fact, I got a clip. We're going to play it when we come back from the intro Ooh. from Vase Productions. I watched some of your content on, on that channel this week. I've of course seen your content on, on uh, Geek News Now um, over the last several months. So I was already familiar with that. And oh, by the way, Monday nights, um, Marvel Mondays, every Monday. MCU Ongoing. Mondays, yep. MC, MCU Mondays. And we yeah. talk about the wider Marvel, but the focus is the anything that's happening in the MCU. But we actually mm -hmm. recently had some fun watching like old trailers and reacting to those. We watched like oh, cool. the Captain America 1990 trailer. Mm -hmm. So we're doing new stuff on there all the time. It's a lot of fun. Fun, fun. He's got a great crew over there. And it'll be this Monday, I'm sure there'll be a lot of Loki. Absolutely. Yep. Lots We're diving into Loki, everything yeah. Loki, getting ready for Wednesday. And over the next uh, month and a half, like a month and a half, I'm sure it'll be a lot of Loki too as well. Absolutely. We're going to be talking about every episode. So Loki over there. Okay. Look at this ghost. Before we go into the intro ghost and two, four, six, there's two rivers in the Amazon that have two different colors and have a point of contact. I think would be a good setting for your guy move for your, for your guy's movie. There you go. Absolutely. We got, we, we got some already got some help on our crew there helping us location scout. All right. We're going to get into the intro and then we're going to get into this episode, whatever number it is. I think it's 148 ish ish. And uh, we're going to do that right now. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, I lied.
Yeah. You didn't think I was going to start the show without that, did you? I feel a little weird. I told you this before we started. I first time ever doing a show without my usual headphones, including actually this might be a bad thing. I don't know. Ever since I started my, my audio podcast and then as I've continued as a live stream, I wore the same white headphones that you saw in past live streams. And today's the first time I switched it up and try. I'm trying ear monitors, more low profile, but it's a little weird. It's like, you know, after you use this, if you're a bowler and you bowl with the same shoes for a number of years and all of a sudden you try out some new, new shoes, it's kind of what tonight feels like. Hi. So, hey. Are you there? We lost I'm you. I'm back. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know what happened there. Okay, we got you. Well, I was talking about my ear. It wasn't important, but I was just talking about my ear monitors. I'm trying these out tonight. It feels a little weird, a little nervous about it. But you know what, Chris? If things go go awry, I can go back over there. The headphones are just over across the room. So I can switch it. I can switch back. I'm I feel better going. knowing that. So yeah, I didn't, my headphones. I didn't, I didn't burn them. I didn't burn them or throw them away or sell them on Craigslist. So I've got them. So we can go back to them if we need to. All right, we're going to have a Thunder Take to open the show. I said Chris Cassie's here. We've got a clip we're going to run from his channel, from his Va Vase Productions channel. Uh, this is one of, a, I think, a series you did. And uh, this actually, here it is. Okay, all right, wait a minute. I haven't gotten there yet. And great. You should be making a left turn here. There's no left. You don't know where I am, tape. This ain't work, Ollie. This ain't working. You should pass three fuzzy poles with Wait. blinking lights. Those are traffic signals. I passed the traffic signals. You should pass three fuzzy poles. This poles stuck, Tully. I need you here. This tape isn't working. I'm sure many of you are wondering what complex involves. <laughs> you should pass three fuzzy poles with blinking lights. Quit blinking at them. Hold them and blink them. Light. Make sure your compost pile gets plenty of air. Now, oh, Sandra, <laughs> dumb bitch. Oh no. <laughs> there he is. The other Star Wars sequel uh, trilogy director of the two, uh, Ryan Johnson. And uh, the <laughs> oh. there's a little clip there of kind of a Last Jedi behind the scenes of sorts. It's, it was just like a cathartic thing for me. And I saw the metaphor. I was watching It's Always Sunny one day, and it was back in like 2018 or 19, sometime after the last year that I come out, which I didn't like. If you did like it, that's fine. I'm not saying you have to like it, whatever. But for me, I didn't like it, and I was getting all kind of crap for not liking it. And I was just like, you have no idea. For me, as like a lot, like for me, and apparently a lot of other people, that version of Luke, this, that, and the other thing, a lot of things in the story we didn't like. So it's like, I just saw that scene and it's always sunny where he's just sitting there eating a cereal. And then all of a sudden he gets, you know, hit from behind and it just ruins his cereal eating experience. And I know not every fan feels that way, but I did. And so that making that made me laugh. And also when he's like fighting with the hero's journey, which is supposed to be the tape guiding him and he can't figure it out. I was that, hilarious to me and i used to make little cartoons like that all the time and i you don't another, as much anymore <laughs> you have another one you did where it's the it's, it's jj kathleen kennedy in the car and i think it's yeah still, yeah who else is in the car it's from the same episode so it's like mm -hmm. later okay. they have this whole trial yeah. to determine like who's to blame and so to figure it out they recreate the situation and so later I have Bob Iger sitting in the front seat of the Jeep and like the Disney shareholders are there with him and he's just explaining. So then, yeah, you take a bite and everything's great. And then D Charlie and um, Frank hit him from behind. And that's uh, Kathleen Kennedy, Ryan Johnson and JJ Abrams and JJ Abrams is the one driving and he's asking for directions and D saying one thing and Charlie's saying another thing, but they each have like, the actual thing, what the, as I, I posted over them, what's actually happened, like Twitter silence or like Jay, you know, people just going nuts. And then they hit him. And then Bob Iger jumps out there. He's like, what? This happens again? Uh, because a lot of people weren't happy with the Rise of Skywalker, as how could they have been given the fact that clearly 
there's no way to continue on from there. A lot of people like to like lay blame in different places. They're like, oh, well, you know, it's JJ's fault for not finishing the series off right. And I was just like, how are you supposed to do that when that's the middle thing? You can't, when you go from here to way over here, but you want to end up yeah. over here, why did you go over here? Why did you do that? Yeah. And then you're mad at this guy for trying to get back where the story's supposed to... Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. That's the first time I've ever had that happen. Uh, I faced the FaceTime came down on my computer while I was, I know who's calling, but it was a FaceTime that was coming on. I, I never thought of turning that off because it never get FaceTime calls. Hello. So I got one on the computer. I don't know if that would, if I had answered it, would it brought it into the live stream somehow? I have no like idea. Call? Yeah. It's, it's like integrated it. into a, as a part of your stream yeah, yards. Uh, it might drag. I know who that is and they may try again. So I may have to keep bouncing it off. Uh, I'll text him and let him know we're doing a show show right now. Um, yeah, so I love that. Uh, and it's a good segue into talking about Star Wars sequels and the sequel trilogy. My question for you, Chris Cassidy, on this Thunder take, I want to hear your thoughts on this. J.J. Abrams now going to be going to D.C. Uh, to do D.C. And in fact, he's producing the new Superman movie that's in the works right now. He's uh, I don't know if he's right. I don't think he's writing it. They have a different writer on board for it. But he's he's uh, going to be producing the new or one of of many producers, but he's also producing other DC stuff mm. for Warner brothers. But he said recently that he does not plan to direct. A lot of people thought he was going to be directing, like doing, you know, producing and directing. He said, I'm not going to be directing any of these DC projects. I'm just producing. Do you believe that this is blowback? The reason why he's not going to direct is because of the blowback that was received from the Star Wars sequel trilogy. It could be partially that, but I doubt it. Um, the thing that a lot of people aren't seeming to realize, or it seems to me like they don't realize about JJ Abrams is, uh, as far as like Hollywood goes, he's pretty upfront about what he does and what he's there to do. You know, like fans may feel like you didn't deliver on this. You butchered Star Trek. And like me, my first experience or not my first experience, but like seeing those new things, I was like, whatever. Um, and then with the sequel trilogy, I don't even blame him because he was setting up a bunch of stuff in the first one. They should have had more of a plan. They didn't. And everyone recently was talking about J.J. Abrams saying that they didn't have a plan. I'm sure you've seen it. Yeah, it was all over the place. I was kind of like, why is this news? I don't get why this is news. Because two years ago, I was doing a series called Read Between the Lines. It was in between um, Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. And just because I noticed that the media, the clickbait was going insane. And not just going insane, but straight up lying. Just full on what the headline is, is different than what is in the body of what they said. The second episode, for instance, was the title was Kevin Smith has his mind melted by the last scene in The Rise of Skywalker. I read the article and people are sharing this, by the way. They're like, look, see, it's going to be great. I read the article and the quote from Kevin Smith is, no, they wouldn't let me see the set or see the shoot. But I yeah. talked to someone who was working on it and he said that if I had seen it, it would melt my mind and so like the title that multiple different sites getting shared by everyone kevin smith has his mind melted read the article itself and that's not even what happened how are you allowed to do these things well another one was about jj abrams and the quote that they had taken everybody ran with it every clickbait site you've ever heard of they were like the the last jedi does not derail the franchise or like it didn't derail the movies and that's the quote that they took. I read those articles and basically that one quote from JJ Abrams, it doesn't really derail. First of all, it kind of does. That's what he's saying there. And second of all, that was the quote they pulled the entire article where he was actually interviewed because at the bottom, you know, they actually have to list their source. Here's the source pages, pages of stuff. This was a huge article, an in-depth pages long article done with jj abrams where he talked about a bunch of different things but he talked about the sequel trilogy and though at one point he did say it doesn't really derail anything another section which i reread for my video is just like 
He goes, there was no plan. There was no script. There was no anything. She called me up and said, would you consider coming back? So, you know, this was something where I was coming in where there was nothing set up there. And he said that before the rise of Skywalker ever came out. Everyone's freaking out about it now. I'm just sitting here like he said it before, but you know why nobody noticed it was because at the same time that pages long article where you actually had to read through what he was talking, he's talked about other stuff. He talked about his other projects. So if you actually read through that and got to where he was talking about Star Wars, you could see where he said there was no plan. And he blames, he always blames the same person. He says the structure of it. There was no inevitability. There was no overall someone in charge. And he says, that's what ruined it all. He said that back then. But yeah. when that article came out, they blitzed everyone with, the one line that they took out of it, it didn't derail, and they wrote entire articles based upon that. They just go and they write. As you can see from this quote from J.J. Abrams, everything is fine with the sequel trilogy and everything is going according to plan. If you actually read the article that they took the quote from, he says, there is no plan. We're just trying to finish this thing. He literally says it's a story that we started himself and then was continued by someone else. So now you're dealing, and he says, he says all of that stuff. So everyone now freaking out and they're like, he admits it. He admits it. I'm like, he admitted it before his movie released. So he's, he was being up front, but they obfuscated it with, you know, a media frenzy. It's yeah. disturbing. It's a, it's a hot, it was a hot mess. Um, yes. I mean, and I had, to, I've read different things online, by the way, I want to start the website. Click. It just calls itself clickbait website. I want to start that website and every story or theory on the website. Is it purposely? You like, can't be mad at it for being clickbait. That's, that's like, you that way you can't, can't be mad at it. Yeah. You knew where you were. <laughs> yeah. It said literally clickbait website. That's like yeah. being mad. If you found porn on Pornhub. Why is this here? Why where are it? you? What? What's you which is, went to the place where it is. So don't be surprised when you find it. Yeah. Which is, I think that could have been an always sunny in Philadelphia premise. <laughs> Why is this porn here? It's on a porn website. It's on Pornhub. <laughs> so what's, what, what are you doing? Uh, um, yeah. So yeah. And there's that story came out again. You know, it was back in the news recently with JJ was on uh, Collider interviews yeah. and he brought that up again because they asked him a question, which was centered on trying to get him to extract something from him. Discussing that, that very mm -hmm. thing. And, and cleverly it, it worked. It got him back on that topic. He uh, just said most things that he'd already said before, but, but this time nothing else was going on. Yeah. Like I said, the other time they were trying to make sure everyone goes and sees his movie. And yeah. also he was in the same interview. He was like, I think we came up with something really good. I mean, the movie hadn't come out yet. That's why when I was like, would you ask him bull like straight on the question, does the last Jedi derail things for your movie? What is he going to say? Yes. No, they were showing trailers for his movie. Obviously, he's not going to say that. He's going to say, you know, things worked out as best they could, but could they have been better? Uh, maybe if we had planned it. Yes. How long have you owned this franchise? You were going to make the sequel trilogy. You marketed the last movie as the end of the Skywalker saga, and yet you didn't plan out the last third of the, you know, it's just... I don't know. It's indefensible, frankly, in this day. Like, you knew what you were doing. You know how much money all this costs. You know how much planning should have been put into it and how much clearer there wasn't. It was riding by the seat of your pants, hiring and firing directors. I hope they make a movie out of it at some point. I want to see oh, the behind-the-scenes footage. Oh. Like, I want to see... It's going to be like freaking um, Apocalypse Now and Heart of Darkness. Like, well, maybe not quite that bad, but... <laughs> Well, someone will do the unauthorized documentary. It'll be kind of mm -hmm. like the documentary was done about the next generation, Star Trek, the next generation. Yeah. Uh, I've never seen that. I think on Netflix or YouTube somewhere, but they'll do, somebody will do a documentary like that about the sequel trilogy and what happened. Um, it may be a while, a long time, but it'll eventually, you know, it's, I'm going to be right. You got my money. Sure. Here, here. Sure. Yeah. Take, Shut take, up my and money. take my money. Take my money when they make the documentary. I want to see that. Um, I'm going to ask you another, like when we get into thoughts and advice later, I have something that kind of ties into this a little bit about theories on what could have been better done with 
other than I, by the way, George Lucas had a outline for all three, for the three, for the story, the trilogy, mm -hmm. the sequel trilogy. And so there, there was an opportunity to, and I'm not saying you had to go that way or you, that you had to go legends cause there was stuff there in the expanded right, universe, right. which I love, but you didn't have to go there either, no. but you should have had a plan. Yeah. They yeah. didn't have a plan, like have a plan. I don't care what your plan have. You're spending millions of dollars on this childhood icons of you know lifelong pop culture phenomenon like change the nature of cinema big deal have a plan with how you're going to carry forward with it that's why the marvel universe you know the mcu has been so successful because kevin feige's been there being like this is where we're going yeah. This is what this is leading up to. And then if even if you make a mistake, you've got so many, you know, it's at least you've planned for yeah. one piece of the story leading into the next. It's like a three part. Yeah. Yeah. I know we could go on forever with it. I, I mean, could. It's, it's, it's another show in itself. And I know. Yeah. And, mm. we've, and you've referenced before how you're kind of I'm still mad at star Wars. Um, the, even, it's for even, me even after it's, mandal even after mandalorian it's like, like there's stuff about that i love to talk about if we were talking about like mandalorian i'd be like oh i really like this yeah uh if we were talking about original trilogy or prequel trilogy but everyone's wondering where things are going from here i'll tell you where they're going um kath you know kathleen kennedy announced the boba fett movie and the obi-wan kenobi movie and then we literally had the head of disney come in and say everything's shut down and then they redid their entire list of things that they were doing, turning the Boba Fett movie into the Mandalorian. And now we're getting a Boba Fett miniseries yeah. and the Obi-Wan movie. And that just shows you like what plans they had and what those plans were worth. And they, they write them up on napkins as they go along. And uh, I think Chris is froze for like, there. You're back. You're back. They write them up on napkins as they go along. There they're they're sitting there and they're like, oh, hey, I lost the napkin from yesterday. So we're going to have to rewrite this. Do you remember what we had on that napkin, uh, guys? I, I, I mean, we, we're only Disney. We only have like billions of dollars that we could have someone write this down for us on a notepad or or dictate it somewhere. Uh, by the way, the sequel trilogy, I liken that to a Star Wars 48 hour film festival where. They they get the they go in the day before the director that's going to be directing that movie like you're going to get a double edged lightsaber, you get a a ball a robot ball that rolls around, and you'll get Luke, uh, Mark Hamill for two minutes, or for thirty seconds. There you go, go go JJ, and then the second movie Ryan you get Mark for uh an uh forty five minutes of screen time, mm. you still get the double edged lightsaber, but this time you're also going to get um. Uh, Benicio del Toro to do whatever you want with him. And there's the Star Wars 48 hour film festival. That's, that's what I, that's the way I look oh at my it. gosh. Okay. Now, okay. The streaming wars. And this is why I referenced JJ Abrams having involvement in two streaming platforms because he's creating DC content, which will end up on the HBO Max app. Yeah. He's also going to do revival of his show. Uh, his, one of his TV series that he had um, with uh, Jennifer Garner. I'm trying to remember the name of the show. But he had a show that he did with her, a, kind of a spy action show. It's a one Alias. Movie. Alias. Alias. He's doing an Alias reboot or <laughs> uh, a, a Alias sequel, a sequel series, bringing back Jennifer Garner. Uh, and that's going to be on Apple TV. Well, good for Jennifer Garner, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Now, it might that be a one off. It might be a one -off. Me, yeah. yeah, it might be a one off. I've never watched I never watched the but show. But that's I'm where actually, he's you know. gonna be putting his like focus. The thing about being right. producers on other things, you like like being a producer on something can mean almost anything. Right. It can mean like you're like a hands-on, you're working with the writers, it can be hands-on, you're working with the director, it can yeah. be literally just something you put into a contract i want to have a yeah. producer credit i want a producer credit on this that's yeah. something they work into contracts all the time and maybe you didn't do jack on that 
but it was part of a deal we made with you with something else. So you're a producer on this way to go. Hey, Oh, you made a really good deal. You're an executive producer on this project. What did you do for that project? I made a deal where they said I was an executive producer on it. Yeah. Or on the other hand, you could have like final say, like yeah. the director doesn't even have final cut that happens. That's why director's cuts exist, you know? So any it could, direct producer could mean anything. I think in this case, he's not going to be as like, hands-on with it yeah he's going to be more focusing on like alias he's got a bunch he's he's got a bunch of different stuff going on coming up so you can only put your like direct focus so many different yeah yeah you can only so split it so many different ways yeah it's somebody there's it's, it's you can be really spread thin and you start to get too many different things um and get pretty stressful then you can get like matt damon on a uh, behind the scenes of entourage <laughs> Anyone that's ever seen that YouTube video of Matt Damon yelling at the star of Entourage. That's actually like uh, one of my favorite things about Matt Damon is that's not the only time like he loves to appear on shows as himself and play himself as an yeah. asshole. It's one of the funniest things I've ever yeah. seen. And he's great at it. Yeah. Playing yeah. the asshole version of himself. Oh my God. Yeah, he, 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 no one plays the asshole Matt Damon the way Matt Damon plays the asshole Matt Damon, or no one plays an asshole themselves as an asshole better than Matt Damon playing themselves. And it's so as funny because he's famous enough that people know who he is. And then it's like, Oh, who is he playing in this? Oh, he's just being Matt Damon. Oh, and he's making himself look like a piece of shit. <laughs> and then it's really, funny. he does a great one in the entourage because he's like yeah. right behind the scenes and he's guilting them into it. Or also like bullying them into making this donation. He's like, yeah. it's water. It's for water. You want people not to have water. What the hell is wrong with you? He's like, I, I want people to have water. <laughs> All right, it's then just, I'll take another 10,000. <laughs> so good. I just don't know why they haven't made Matt Damon is an asshole. That's a movie. Just make that movie, Matt Damon and call it. Matt Damon is an asshole. He, he plays himself. Of course. Matt it's, Damon as you know Matt what? Damon. All you do is you just take all the that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Matt Damon is an asshole, the movie. I'm gonna compile all the clips of him being an asshole. <laughs> you could do that. Now you could do that with your editing skills and, and stitch those together and make it and make that movie. Oh, yeah. Matt Damon is an asshole. Coming I get credit from the, I get credit. Okay, so from the executive credit. producers oh. of River Streaming Wars. <laughs> yes. Oh so my god! We're gosh. starting a production company. It's called It's oh a Base boy. Productions. <laughs> there we go. Matt Damon is an asshole. Come from the, from the makers of this streaming, streaming wars. Streaming wars. <laughs> streaming wars 2021. 2021. All right. Speaking of streaming wars 2021, as it says down there at the bottom. All right. 2021. The status of the streaming wars. The latest article I read today was that Netflix is still leading in subscription, still leading in the streaming wars, but. They've had a substantial slowdown in subscription, uh, in subscriptions that you know, based on their their usual uh, data, uh, it has considerably slowed down quite a bit this year from what they were doing uh, in 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 the past. So, obviously, Disney, HBO Max is the primes are putting a dent into that. Um, Prime, I think, probably a little bit less because I think still Prime primarily. <laughs> no pun intended, but still thought of as Amazon, the, the delivery service, and then Prime Video as the add-on kind of component that you get sort of an added bonus that comes yeah. with the delivery service. And I think people that had Prime before, there's probably not a big difference in the numbers that have Prime now, I'm thinking. I'll tell you the big advantage that Prime has, and it's part of that. Part of the fact that they aren't just a video thing. Amazon Prime, you know, when you think of Amazon Prime, you don't think Amazon Prime Video. That's why Amazon Prime Video <laughs> begun the streaming I, wars have. Yes. <laughs> My guy. Um, anyway, Amazon Prime, there it is. There it is. Yeah, there it has begun the streaming wars have. Begun. <laughs> love, it, love it. Love it. Victory. Victory, you say? And, uh, there's a little look at, by the way, we want to see the oh my landscape. Gosh, Peacock. Peacock trying to get in, in the game and see what that looks like when Peacock tries to get in the game. They're, they're kind of surrounded. And by the way, whoever made this meme uh, was clever enough, or I don't know if it was a happy accident, but it was, was clever enough to put John Krasinski, Jim, as the Prime as Video. Being Jack that he, Ryan. He's Jack Ryan on Prime Video, so it might have been a quinky dink. 
but Prime Video has the advantage of being also Amazon. As in, when you're in Prime Video, there's a lot of stuff that's free. But yeah. then there's also stuff that you can pay for, or there's stuff that you can get right. with commercials, right. or you can rent stuff. It's a rental thing right along with it. Oh, we don't have access to this. You have to rent it. But hey, boy, isn't that convenient? I can't just get any given movie on Netflix whenever I want. I'm I'm paying for it. I got whatever they got, but that's it. Right. With Amazon Prime, if I decided that I want to watch a random movie and rent it from them, I have that option. Mm -hmm. So that... I think gives them, and not only that, every time you decide to rent something from them, it's like what four bucks or whatever. Boom, that's another four bucks they get on top of your regular subscription, which nobody else really has that except for the places that are like uh Disney Plus and they're like exclusive or when they offer the movie alongside, like in theaters, the way they're doing now. But yeah, that's not really even comparable to the fact that amazon says here's everything you can get for free but if you decide there's something that you really want to watch right now you can get it pretty easily yeah so that's an advantage that they have over those other ones yeah and that's that's great and they got all the monies i mean did the two and companies that tons of money disney plus and prime video have all the monies Disney Plus, obviously, they own theme parks, which I've been struggling because they've been closed for a number of months. They just just got open. Both of them just opened back up recently. Uh, also, uh, Avengers theme park is finally open. Uh, I don't know if it's open to the wide, wide public or if it's just a tour right now for RSVP. But they are uh, people are uh, touring the uh, the Avengers theme park. Avengers, Avengers campus. I saw some yeah, pictures yeah. today uh, of the uh, Spider-Man ride and. So this still looks really cool. So they're back open and they're back. They're they're going full blast, somewhat full blast. Mm -hmm. um, they lost a lot of money during that time, but then they made made up. They made up for some of it because their app was starting to really build during the pandemic. So, but all the monies are at prime. It's one of the reasons why, if I was Netflix, I'd be really worried right now. When you look at Disney Plus and the the bank account that they have at Disney and the IPs they have. And then you look at also a prime because they have all that monies from the delivery. So. Yeah. And you've got, it's, it's been this monster that's been growing and changing for years since, I mean, Netflix started it off. There's a reason they have the most. It's because they were the first ones to do it, to offer it well and do it right, to have a big library. I mean, some of the stuff they had was even like, the daredevil show and the different Marvel shows like Marvel was investing in Netflix at a certain point to make shows for that sort of thing until they got in their heads. Hey, the streaming thing, this is the future of cable of renting movies of media delivering to the public. This is the future of it. We need to get in on this. So that's when, when that started clicking a, you had tons of other streaming things pop up, some of them too early with not enough behind them, like the Yahoo yeah. streaming service Yeah, uh, just folded almost immediately. It was out for, I remember I watched Community on it, but then soon after that, it was gone. It was gone. Now the, last then, the last episodes of Community that were ever made were made and produced by Yahoo or where they were distributed by Yahoo. The Yahoo yeah. streaming or whatever it was called. Yeah. And that was gone so quick. I think... That might have gotten gobbled up by Hulu, but it might have just gotten and Hulu since been gobbled up by like Disney Plus and everything's folding in and yeah. being in you know devoured and WB and DC HBO Max and that stuff has changed hands five different times. Discovery yeah. Channel. Discovery Go. Um, now you got Discovery Go, which is well, a that just under... they're combining that now with yeah. I think HBO and HBO bottom, which I don't know how that's going to work. If it's going to be a bundle, I'm assuming it'll be a bundle. I like what ESPN does with uh, ESPN plus does with Disney plus. And oh yeah. Well, it's going to be like an all inclusive, like this is the streaming service that has everything you want, just like all of them claim to be. And the only yeah. way you can actually do that is by having just about as much as you can, which is why they keep gobbling each other up. Um, well, but hands they're down, hands down the strongest IPs. In 2021, library of IPs hands down has got to be Disney with Disney Plus. Would you agree? Um, for their 
yeah, their their own actual like intellectual properties that they're making. Yes, like that's another thing. Disney Plus, the way that they started it out, they saw how good Netflix was doing. They stopped funding the shows for next Netflix. They started canceling because they were selling the licensing to these shows. Like you used to be able to watch Iron Man and a bunch of different, you know, Marvel movies on Netflix because they were like, here, you pay us a certain amount of money and you can show these on your, you know, but then when they're like, we're making Disney plus now. Okay. We've got to, once this deal is done, it's done. We're not renewing that deal. And so you have everything Disney owns being pulled from Netflix, being pulled from any other, you know, service so that they can have it under. And what else did they do? They bought up Fox. Fox was a distributor. Fox Searchlight Pictures, they have tons and tons and tons of movies now, but some of those movies are still like on loan to different TV programs or cable networks or things like that. They have the rights to air those until a certain time. So even though Disney now owns Fox, they can't necessarily air everything that Fox owns. And they don't even necessarily have the obligation to do that. So that's another thing. My film professor was just saying the other day, don't just assume you'll be able to watch whatever you want on streaming, like get it yeah. on a hard copy if you really want to have it, because they're not just because Disney now owns all these Fox titles doesn't right. mean they're on any ob obligation to offer them on Disney plus. And they, it's not like when they bought, it's not like those just appeared. I think X-Men origins just now like showed up on Disney plus and that's, I'm not even saying that's a, a great movie or whatever, but right. how long have they had Fox? Why is it just now? Like, why isn't it? Why isn't it that they just hear are here's the whole thing. Here's the whole library because they stand to make more money off of doing it a different way. You know, it's funny with Disney. Another complaint with Disney plus early on was them taking classic movies like splash with Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah and taking and editing out some of the uh, more, like revealing scenes of her nudity, like with uh, like a bare a bare ass and stuff like that. That's the worst thing you can do. The appropriate thing to do is have a disclaimer at the beginning, like they do with some cartoons right. and different things that were like these were made. They reflect in a certain time period. They reflect the opinions of those time period. That's not to say that those opinions are correct, but you might be offended by some of what you see here. But yeah you can't change history because that's to deny it. If you yeah. change it, then people don't actually even know what actually happened. They don't know how bad or how wrong or how offensive it might've been. If you don't know where you came from, how do you know where you're going? So yeah. have that disclaimer. Like, but Dan, then the history shows Daryl Hannah had a bare ass and splash. Don't change that history. That's this that's is what we're fighting for. This is what we're fighting. I'm not kidding. Uh, do you remember that? the? Yes, to keep it as it was. This is the way it was released. This is the way it yeah. is. Don't yeah. don't think that you can change it. Like right. that you because what? Because you know better than me what I should watch. You know better than the general public. You're gonna censor. That's censorship. Well, and here's and, the thing. Here's the thing. If you watch an old episode of say say a, a show like Cheers. Night court, absolutely super sexist um in the way women were treated and portrayed and and uh and now people now that that weren't alive then would watch that could be very shocked and surprised mm -hmm. and maybe offended probably offended but well if you're getting how, offended that's ridiculous because it was a different time it was a different and time listen, yeah listen to the studio audience okay well that wanna, was society i want to know times, a bit. Yeah. times change I want to know a little bit about what it was like back then. And even if that's just a, a fictional portrayal of kind of what it was like, it's still kind of more accurate portrayal than you, you might be more accurate than your, you might be more accurate than you realize. Mm -hmm. um, and okay. There was racism. There was a lot of racism. There was a lot of sexism. There was a lot of, and, and Hollywood and their stereotypes. That's a history of filmmaking and what, was happening in filmmaking back then in storytelling. And I think there's something to, to be learned. And, and, and like you were saying, 
from that and experience. it's so different the technology not just in filmmaking but worldwide how we communicated with each other how long it took to shoot something on film edit it by hand yeah get it out to television say and then the evolving that's why we have streaming wars right now is because technology has changed things have evolved when i worked at a the movie theater at university of maryland college park uh, it was one theater, real big, so I only had to show one movie at a time. But some of the movies still came on film, and when a movie comes on film, that's two giant cases, and in each of those cases is like three reels of film. You have to put each of those reels of film on a thing, spin it out, connect it. I had like that's the thing you had. The movie shows up on different reels. The projectionist had to put it all onto one thing. And then when it was ready to go back, you had to like cut it again. So like those things where you, you know, chop things, that was something you literally used to have to do. But we also, at the same time, it was like the cusp of, you know, the digital revolution. Everything was, a lot of things were being done digitally. Whole movies would come just like on a jump drive. So you could also play it through that. We'd have our trailers loaded up on a jump drive for the most part, but uh, we also had different trailers that were loaded up on film. And so like that was in the middle and now everything would be done digitally unless you were literally a theater that says we show things on film. Everything is done pretty much digitally. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and talk about Disney and how once they figured out, they saw what Netflix and they got some look at that. They got to look at the numbers and they well, said, thinking, this is the future. Why are yeah. we licensing this out for someone else to make money? Let's hold on to it. We'll yes. make our own streaming service. We keep the money. Well, they knew they literally already had a streaming service in their back pocket with all the yep. IPs they had. And nobody else was could do that on day one other than Disney. I mean, more nobody could do that as well on day one as Disney could. No Paramount, no Sony. Disney and that's the only reason why Netflix is ahead is because they were already doing it. Like there was Blockbuster, there was that's everything was physical. Again, this is the yeah. technology thing. You had to get go get the videotape, you had to go get the DVD. Yeah. But yeah. technology advances, internet speeds advance. You can now just stream a movie. That didn't used to be a thing. You couldn't you at least had to download it first. You couldn't just take a chance on streaming it. The, the type of thing we're doing right now, like 10 years ago, would have felt like wow, that's risky. I hope you have like the, the highest top end performance. And now it's a lot more commonplace. The ability to get media from one place to another has changed yeah. dramatically. Yeah. And so because of that, that instant gratification, you know, people want different things. I want to be able to watch all of this. And that's why it was actually kind of interesting to see Disney doing the, the weekly releases. And it's so smart of them too. Yeah, because it's you serious. have everyone wants to binge. Let's be honest, that's a big thing. People love binge watching, having the entire library of a show right there, and you can just sit down and watch as many episodes as you want. That's a big appeal for a lot of these things. But at the same time, these the things that Disney is releasing. <laughs> There's Netflix for the last ten years, and then boom. Disney realized that people were going to be coming for their content. Like they saw Endgame, saw the MCU. They said, if we make a streaming service and we're releasing MCU quality shows yeah. or mini series, whatever you want to call them, because they're not necessarily shows. It's not like you're going to get multiple seasons of these things, despite yeah. how much people keep talking about it. Like that's what they are. It's not really what they are. Not that they can't maybe do another version of it, but they're made they're made to be there. The same boom, boom, the same boom. characters may come into it and have a different series. But what like, they realized is okay, look at their lineup. They have something coming out pretty much the entire time. Every month they've got something new and it leads into the next month. What does that mean? Well, you gotta keep your subscription because you gotta this, you know. Loki goes for two months they're and then keep, yeah. a movie and they're keeping, they want to get new subscribers and keep people subscribed. And that's the churn rate that streaming services look at. That's the literal uh, terminology they use. Netflix, that's a big thing to look at, is the churn rate. It's the comparison of how many people they're getting versus how many people are leaving. And yeah. basically you want it to be more, you know, 
more people that you're getting and keeping than people that are leaving. And I think you said it that Netflix has seen a slowdown in the people that they're getting. Right. And that is because of these Paramount Plus, HBO Max, all, like more than ever, the streaming wars in 2021, because of the coronavirus and shutting down the theaters, that just, it actually jump started and nuked like this thing that was going to be happening anyway. Yeah. The technological revolutions that we were talking about, that was already happening. But, you know, theaters and different competitors, different distributors, they were kind of like, well, we don't have to do anything. Coronavirus hits. People can go to movie theaters anymore. Who can offer these different things? It was just like weirdly perfect time for Disney. They start, yeah, it, at it, least it, for that. Um, it and for Netflix, best. all the streaming yeah. services benefited, but I think it benefited Disney Plus the most, and at least in the very beginning, because they already had Mandalorian season two looked locked and loaded, ready to go. Yeah, they had some problems. They had to finish up some of their Disney series that were delayed. They would have gotten. I think they wanted to get those out sooner, but it still benefited those series when they because they were they were ready for it. Yeah, like HBO Max and. Uh, they're releasing their set of movies that were supposed to come out after delaying them and they're coming out simultaneously. That was all playing catch up to Disney because yeah. Disney was already ready to go. Like basically they had to delay some movies yeah, at, like Black Widow and some things that would have happened in theaters got pushed back, but they were already ready for this like 2020 to Locked be loaded. Yeah. their streaming year. And it was just like, Okay, Good. here we go. There you go, yeah, because people are stuck at home. And it gave them a test to try out a different model, which they're going to continue to do for a while with the uh, the multi-release multi uh, where they put a movie out in theaters but simultaneously release it on a pre on their premium version of their streaming right. service like they did with uh, – it didn't work. It didn't go as well with Mulan. Uh, but in the case of Black Widow, a bigger brand, a bigger name for Marvel, it could it could work. And that's the thing. It's given those options. A lot of streaming services say we want to give you options. We want you to have the option uh, because, you know, that's give the customer what they want. We don't know what you want. You have whatever you want. Uh, that's like a big thing. Now, you might think, whoa, 30 bucks to watch the movie at home. That's stupid. For me as an individual, yeah, it is. For a family of five or for a people that want to have a party, hey, I'll right. I'll buy it at my place. Everyone yeah. chucks in a buck or whatever. And we watch it all over. You know, I got, if you have a friend that, so that's a possibility, but also people like to go out to the movies. You stand to make money on both. And here's the thing for Disney. As many people as you still have going to the movies, you're still making money that way. If people pay for it direct through Disney plus, that's all money. Just going straight to them. No having to pay the theaters, anything, no having to pay for, you know, whatever distribution well, or anything it's right to the person they're giving you the money right for that boom well black widow could end up becoming the most successful uh premium video on demand of all time in a very short lifespan of that concept uh it's got it's going to hit the perfect spot too because it's going to come out in july just as movie theaters are starting to kind of open back up confidence is starting to i think build about going back to the theaters you know, they've had some movies that did pretty well in the theater recently, at least by pandemic standards, did pretty well sure. <laughs> uh, with with the Godzilla versus King Kong. And then we just had uh, I know nobody did pretty, pretty good in, in theaters. Uh, and then uh, th there's been a couple others. So now Black Widow, a very recognizable name, um, a very recognizable you know brand from the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to come out. And that probably will get more interest from people in paying the thirty dollars. Like you said, people are the world's starting to open up a little bit again. Oh, you want to so get back out there, absolutely. People are going to probably be feel more comfortable with going over to someone's house and chipping in and watching this movie with them and doing a little let's pay, I'll Venmo you uh five bucks to come over and watch that, and then you know, somebody yeah, else like it, yeah. the person who buys it, whatever you buy the thing, somebody else buys the pizza, somebody else buys the beer, yeah. you got yourself a party right there, and we're watching Scarlet Johansson. Playing the Black Widow. Fine, I mean, finally, finally, you're gonna see that. You'll boom. finally see Marvel fans yeah. will be very excited to finally see that movie and find out if it if it was, you know, 
if that movie had come out when it was supposed to, we would be saying we're finally seeing this movie. And it got pushed back. So now we're finally, finally seeing it. Finally, 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 finally seeing this movie. Yeah. So and think about The Quiet Place. That was a weird one because that one was literally days, like if not minutes away from being released during the pandemic. And John Krasinski and Emily Blunt had already gone out and done all the press for that movie. They had been on the press junkets, the talk shows, all of that. And so John Krasinski was talking recently about how deja vu it was to have sure. to go back and promote a movie twice in two back-to-back -back years. There's a couple movies that are like that for me. I know one of them is it's coming out in August. Ryan Reynolds, Free Guy. Yeah. It's him. Yeah, it was supposed yeah. to come out in like 2020. The first trailer came out in 2019. You did a trailer reaction on your show for that one, didn't you? We did one recently because yeah. I've been trying to do more reactions. I like doing them because we react to it and then we talk about our thoughts on it. Yeah. And the reason that I brought that one up was because like this movie still hasn't come out yet. Wait a minute. I was excited for this. Wait a minute. What yes. is this? Like I've been excited and, about this before. <laughs> yeah. Like what is happening? Why is it? Oh, right. The hole and the, in the pushback and the, right. mad and the yeah. And that, okay. So it's coming around again. And so I'm like Ryan Reynolds. I love him. I love Deadpool. And this movie is basically like, it's a video game movie. He's plays an NPC. I mean, I just can't wait to see it. It's intriguing. It, yeah. It looks hilarious. Uh, it reminds me, I think someone said it's like the Lego, like the guy, yeah, well, we did the reaction, John from uh, the geek and I podcast. He said, yeah. uh, the, this movie is like a combination of the Lego movie and the Truman show. <laughs> I was like, Oh yeah. I remember that. That was a good analogy. Great, that that was, that was, yeah, oh. that's a good... yeah. Well, another one, no time to die. Because they had they had yeah. released the soundtrack already, and they released the music video <laughs> that was for, from the soundtrack, and so the hype machine was was turning full speed ahead on No Time to Die, and then that was another movie that it was going to feel like deja vu when it finally comes out. Exactly, mm -hmm. and now uh, James Bond has been bought up. MGM. I mean, we're talking about streaming yeah. wars. Yeah, it relates to the streaming wars topic because that now you know they're all trying to acquire whatever's left to acquire now by the way sony said they're not they're not selling right i mean i think they pretty much right now have said they're not for sale at least they're not selling to disney yeah thing but yeah because there was a lot of speculation about maybe disney would get sony but yeah they got so mgm uh you uh, now prime has got mgm which is very controversial i'll have a question about that for you later related to the james bond part of that acquisition going to amazon and how it's got some people stirred up uh, from the James Bond family, um, oh. as you as you may or may not already know, but yeah, so that was acquired. Then, of course, Disney acquired Fox early on. Uh, Netflix, though, has a deal struck with Sony, if I'm not mistaken, on the Sony library to be the exclusive streamer of, of much of the, much of their library. That'd be an interesting move, uh, and it would kind of make sense. It would make sense for those two to come together against some of these other behemoths yeah. that alone they might have trouble dealing with. Netflix is going to be having more trouble. Um, now they yeah. do have, like, they do have. They are the international like streaming. There's different titles available in are, the UK than the is yeah. in. That, so they are there. Netflix is like your go-to. It's incorporated into like Verizon. Like it's part of their setup. That's deals they have with different people. So there are advantages that these different things have. But at, again, as we continue to go forward, we're going to continue to see them gobble each other up. And yeah, it's still hope. happening. You know, yeah. people are like, no, it's, you know, they're not just always going to be by each other. I was like, it just happened the other day. It just happened a year ago. Every year, somebody else buys somebody else out. Disney Plus took in like ESPN and Hulu and when they in Fox. So what do you think? They're just going to stop? Okay, well, we've got enough now. Let's just stop. Netflix could do really well going forward. They, they, they struck the deal a few years ago, even before the streaming wars heated up with Adam Sandler. And they, they to do a multi movie, multi uh, project deal with Netflix, and that's done pretty well for them. I know a couple of the movies did really well, like the mystery. He did that mystery cruise movie with Jennifer Aniston, and people yep. forget Adam Sandler was a you know a box office giant for a number he's of huge. years. Huge, yeah, he's huge. No, if he's still go, a big draw. People give that a lot of crap, but that was a good deal by both of them. No, because... it's a no brainer. 
I would make that deal 10 times in a row. He makes funny movies that, okay, are they going to be like critical acclaimed? Like this is the best blah, blah, blah. Not necessarily. Is it worth your money if you're already paying for Netflix and you're getting some fresh Adam Sandler? Hell yeah. Why not? Billy Madison wasn't like, this is amazing. This is so insightful. This is, this is brilliant no i thought it was, it was pretty you know, insightful I, it's just, well i'm not saying it's not but it's a it's a lot of like college humor or yeah. like you know late night you know if you were to look up what genre it would be it'd be like late night jerk off whatever like you know like who cares like fun raunchy nonsense well i think they should build on that model and i, I know they're doing some stuff with eddie murphy that the uh, the Dolomite is my name. He did that uh, mm-hmm. a couple of years ago before the pandemic. Apparently, he's going to do the Beverly Hills Cop sequel with Netflix. I know they're going to do the stand up comedy special. Hopefully, that still happens. As a plan, the plan was for him to do his first stand up comedy. But I think they should go to other big giants like from the the cinema. Like Will Ferrell would be a great example. Make that same deal with Will Ferrell, a four or mm-hmm. five movie deal with Will Ferrell. That probably draws in people. Uh, now I know they're going to do the Zack Snyder Army of the Dead. They're talking about building that into a whole universe. That's they're also thing. doing uh, Ryan Johnson's two sequels for his. Right. Which out. you know what? Keep him away from Star Wars, and I'll I'll entertain whatever he's got to put forth. But just keep him. Away I from liked Star Wars. I like Knives Out a lot. I'll give him credit for Knives Out, and that it was a fun movie. It was a great date night movie. Watched spiritual i did see it with a, a girl as well because i don't think she wanted to see a uh, star wars movie that was out and i was like well this isn't gonna work and it didn't so yeah well <laughs> not uh, that i even wanted to see yeah. the star wars movie i think at the time <laughs> but it was just a test ah it was a test because <laughs> <laughs> right. i should be picky you should <laughs> i joke i tease it's fine no. Uh, no, I think they get they got they can bring in big name directors. I mean, they may they may be they may be out of studios they can buy. Those might be all bought up. They may be out of like you know. Well, they are I, working on making their own original content too. There may be limited IPs left to buy up that are right. like those marquee IPs, but they can go. They can go. They of course they are doing some of. The, I mean, they're doing the He Man stuff with Kevin Smith. They're the doing Witcher. Whatever, yeah, whatever they can get in the IPs world, they're still trying to go out and get what that's left. Uh, you know, the Cobra Kai, they're going to milk the hell out of Cobra Kai at this point. Sure. I mean, well, also the, the Witcher with Henry, yeah. uh, Cavill. like that was huge when it first, and they just finished shooting the second season. Like they, they're, they have like Disney obviously has everything Disney and now it's got Fox stuff. You don't know what they're going to, they've got the MCU. They've got star Wars. So you know that that's there, but everything else is kind of up in the air. You've got yeah. Amazon has some great, like the boys and invincible, like alternative genre or like breakdowns yeah. of the superhero genre. Yeah, And that's good. That's good. It gives you, because you know, you're not going to get that from Marvel. Like they're full on into yeah. the actual, you know, the looking up to this. And so this other, that that's the other side of the coin. And they're like, well, if you're not going to do it, we're absolutely going to do it because that's what's left an area that you can't be doing things. Well, you've got like your medieval fantasies. HBO max is trying to like still cash in on some game of Thrones stuff, even though they yeah. trip and bloody their nose so bad at the end there. I think they canceled three out of four of their planned game of thrones because they're like we're gonna do everything you love game of thrones we're gonna keep doing it and then their final yeah. season was like and they were like okay maybe we'll do one if well they might take a break they might try to take a break it. too and hope people forget they might take a break and hope people forget about how bad that last season was and they might just remember the the day the times when they loved well, they it they kind of have and it's then been, people will like, be ready for ready ready again Maybe. I think that's they did of, say that, they're kind of what they're doing. It's kind of what they're, they're doing. getting ready to like start shooting the one that they yeah. still have planned. It's a prequel, I think. Yeah. And I don't know much more about it. Uh, I'm not invested in it that much. I wasn't invested in the original game of Thrones. I enjoyed the show. I liked it. I didn't read the books or the first book a while ago. I didn't read them, but it was painfully obvious because I got into it and I was watching by the last season that, and I said it before it came out. I was worried 
I was like, just because these two guys, and because that was another thing, Kathleen Kennedy was like, we're going to have the Game of Thrones writer do their own Star Wars trilogy. Look how great we are. We've got these great guys. And that's what I was, I was like, just because they've read these books and taken what was in the book and formatted that to be a TV show doesn't mean that they actually can create original ideas or finish this story they couldn't finish the story they had no idea what they were doing they got let go from the star wars things and kind of like a hush hush forget we even ever said anything about it um kind of deal and who knows what they're gonna what they're currently doing i have no idea but my goodness was that just like a yes you could read the books and turn that transcribe that from book form into script form but when it came down to like finishing the story when you didn't have a book to read from woof what a bungled mess and that's what you got to look out for oh by the way we can't have, go to this topic in this episode without covering peacock and peacock's gonna be great they got punky brewster that's like punky brewster and say by the bell they're they're fine it's like the NBC. That's world building. They can build the the world <laughs> of Saved by the Bell and Punky Brewster, multi series, multi movie. No, I'm just wondering how long. I'm waiting for the building standalone miniseries. Mr. How Belding. long does that last? Like how long? How much longer is? Because that's like another cable. And I'm pretty sure the CBS one that what is now part of Paramount Plus because I'm. Well, that's my that's my question for you. Last like, question on this is: Where do you see five years down the road? How does this all shake out? Obviously, uh, the technology continues to improve. Streaming becomes even more accessible. We know that much. They're putting Google Fiber in all over the place in my in my city. Yeah, um, my brother just got that. And... It's supposed to be faster. I don't know. What, what does he say? He's in San Francisco. He had uh, Comcast, and he says it's. It's it's pretty okay. So it's better. Well, and for us being live streamers, that's a okay with us. If that's going to be that, really is that great. So yeah. So five years down the road, uh, what happens? Do we end up just like cable TV, only without the video stores still open, which is not a good world? If the robots haven't taken over, if, if that's a big if, that's a big if. there's no zombie apocalypse, there's no well, I mean, I, I'm thinking it's going to be coming down to like. Disney, Amazon, and Netflix. Yeah. Those three. Now, maybe there's a fourth in all of the other ones that are out there. If they end up being gobbled up by each other and coming together, that could present possibly. But I don't think HBO Max, while separate from like Paramount, while separate, will be able to contest with these things. They're either going to get gobbled up by one of those other ones or they're going to come together to to stand up to those other ones. And if Sony's already with Netflix, then the rest of these other ones are going to get gobbled up at some point. Or... Well, and the biggest, and the biggest reason for that, and I agree with you on what you said about HBO max. And I think the biggest reason for that is, is that DC right now is just not stable enough to carry it. Like the MCU is for Disney plus in terms of like how strong the, the MCU is to carry along a good part. They don't, they won't exclusively carry along Disney plus, but they do carry a lot of it. Yep. And it's it enough. Does. And it's enough. It's yeah. a big, it's a big, like strong thing. If to you carry. want the MCU, if you want to continue watching these stories unfold, if you're you know a fan of that, this is where you go for that. Yeah. That's a big part of if you're Star Wars, that's where you go for it. You want the Simpsons, they got that too. Yeah. Um, so that's a pretty bit i mean for me even personally i may not like everything disney does like their live action remakes are you kidding me the, a why are you doing live action remakes b why are those the movies that you're choosing you, you're picking the ones that are like with musicals that have like song breaks for kids don't do those go get atlantis that one doesn't have song break for kids. That one's actually too realistic for a lot of kids. And that's yeah. why it probably didn't do as well as the other ones, but it's perfect for a steampunk science fiction action adventure with a live action oh, yeah. cast. But no, let's make a live action Lion King. That's not actually live action. It's just all CGI, but we're calling it live action because that sounds better than an all CGI Lion King. Oh, don't get me started. You know what I got? That'll be a part of one of the other questions I have. 
it's funny about the Disney live action remakes is going to apply to in a way to one of the questions I have. Now here's here's what I think. I think that I don't think Peacock makes it. I don't think Peacock makes it. They have all the Harry Potter not, movies. Not on its own. Yeah. Not on its own. Not on its own. It may merge. Well, HBO could Max be, just be, got all the Harry. Be, it, HBO Max just be, got all the Harry Potter movies. I think. Well, and they also have them on Peacock. Because I was watching the free. Oh, I watched yeah. the free version. Yeah, I watched the free version of Peacock the other day, and I saw that they had. I was just looking at checking it out, and I watched. I saw that they had because because mm -hmm. that's one of the things with Peacock. It's rare from and Hulu. I think is this way too. They have a, a, a free version with commercials. Now Peacock's a yeah. little weird because they'll show you content that is not a part of the free service, and you the only way to differentiate it from the stuff that's included on the free service is a little tiny little lo little emblem or logo at the corner square. So I'll have my son with me, and I was like, which one of these kids shows on Peacock do you want to watch? And he said, this one here, and I, I won't see the little emblem, and I'll hit the thumbnail, and we'll say, oh, this requires a subscription. They do that on purpose. They make it very subtle to where if you see something you really get excited about and you want to watch, you click it, and you're like, oh, I got to pay to watch that. I have to pay the subscription. And I know a lot of people also, of course, you know a lot of people, I'm sure, that did this. They were doing this even before COVID because it was starting to pile up the, the number of subscription services that were out there. They rotate them and they'll do like when Mandalorian season starts, they'll they'll cancel their Netflix and just have Disney Plus until the Mandalorian season would end. And then they would finish it and then they would cancel their Disney Plus like right away. And then they would start their whatever Paramount Plus service so they could watch the new season of Star Trek or or they would start up their Disney Plus and, or their Netflix when Stranger Things would start. Those big shows that they want to see, they would time their cancellation and then resubscribing. Now it's going to get trickier because I'm sure these services are strategically trying to play shows in a way to where you wouldn't be able to do it unless you wait and watch it much later. That's what uh, you know. Disney Plus is doing with their scheduling, the weekly releases that carry over from month to month. So if you want to watch right. this one whole show, you at least have to be there for two months, and then the next show starts after that and yeah. carries into the next month. So you know, and instead of just releasing everything at once, so you can binge it, you know. But if you did that, then you could binge it all in one month of subscription time and then cancel it and then not be there. So yeah, they're definitely looking for different things. They've even you know, they're trying to cut down on like password sharing, which is what I do with my two yeah, brothers and my sister. Yeah, we each have one account in different places. And whenever we want to watch something, we just sign with the other person's account. That means like, instead of me paying like 50, 60 bucks for yeah. Disney plus Netflix, blah, 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 blah. I pay for one of them. And then anytime I, I just sign and they're like, well, Oh, uh, we want to make more money. And I'm just like, well, uh, how are you going to stop that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure think, you'll try and find a way. <laughs> I think these three, these three will last through the war. I think, I think Disney plus the IPs are too strong. The library is yeah. too strong. I think they'll survive and I think they'll come up with new stuff. Um, but MCU is pretty strong for a while. That cinematic universe thinks it's pretty strong for, for several more years. Oh yeah. Um, Star Wars still a pretty damn strong IP. Depends on how they do with that next couple of years. But in the meantime, Mandalorian, Boba Fett, I think it's going to be pretty good for a couple of years. Obi-Wan, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, Obi-Wan. They've got some... my money for a little while. And they, though, yeah. Yeah. I'm more excited now than I was before. Because when you had the Obi-Wan movie and the Boba Fett movie under Kathleen Kennedy's direction, mm -hmm. I was just like, good God, who knows what she's going to do to these people, like what she did to Luke. Yeah. But now that that's all been taken away and we've seen what they can do with the Mandalorian when uh, people that care about the shit are working on it. Uh, you know, I'm much more hopeful for what we're going to see. Yeah. So, so like, think, yeah, so I'm still there for it. I might not have been otherwise, but Mandalorian's got me mm. there for star Wars. Yeah. That's a good starting point for sure. So they got, I think the three that last for sure, Disney plus, I think Netflix just because of habit. And also, uh, they, I mean, they're, they're, they're still number one. And then Prime Video um, has yeah. all the money, all the monies as they've got. They can't. They're too big to fail. Like, yeah, people were crazy about the like the Lord of the Rings budget was over 500 million. I was like, dude, the or 500 million. 
five hundred million is nothing to the guy with like two hundred billion. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. that's nothing. That's nothing. <laughs> That's that's nothing. Just hope that the show is actually good. For that it much money, I money. hope it is. <laughs> but but do, he can afford that. He has all the monies. I do think that Netflix needs to cool it on cancellations of shows that have seemingly a popular uh, following. Uh, just 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 this week, Jupiter's Legacy was canceled with it with a cliffhanger, kind of canceled. They're, it's not going to be Jupiter's Legacy, but they are continuing to tell stories from that universe. I haven't watched Jupiter's Legacy. I just know that I read yeah. the next season or whatever is not going to be called Jupiter's Legacy, but it's going to be focused on the villains. So if like this was looking at yeah. the heroes, the next one, so it's canceled. I would say it's like they're planning on doing more with that universe. Okay. Just the next place they're going isn't like season two of Jupiter's Legacy. It's right. villains, so it's it's kind of okay. That's better. That's a little better. Yeah, but I think I, mean, I think other shows they canceled. They had the, they had this, the uh, the glow. They had glow, um, gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Mm, wrestling. Uh, they they ended that show. There were still arcs to be wrapped up. Story arcs to be wrapped up. The thing I th I think is the issue is when you cancel a show. And it has a cliffhanger, and they don't wrap that up. That makes that show less valuable for your app, in terms of like, oh, when someone's thinking about paying and subscribing, what shows could I watch on here? Maybe I'll subscribe to Netflix this summer and watch a bunch of binge a bunch binge watch a bunch of shows on Netflix. And then you start to read up on these shows, and you see, well, this one was canceled before it was. It had a closure on them. They had a cliffhanger left, and they didn't close it out. I don't want to watch that show. And I think it makes automatically the existing seasons of that show less valuable on your streaming app. And you devalue because um, the show stays on your app. Whatever episodes were, were filmed and, and, and distributed of that show, of that, of the, that series is on your app. And you immediately make it less valuable by not fin fin finishing the show, giving it, a cl giving it some closure. I don't understand that. I mean, Glow could have been five episodes, a mini, a, a half season. You could have wrapped it up. And there are other shows like that. It probably. might, I mean, it might come down to, again, the different decisions they're making going forward. How much is it costing? Are they the ones that make Glow? Is that like a Netflix original? Pretty sure it was, yeah. They might be looking at it like, how many people are watching this? How much money are we spending on it? How much return are we getting off it? And it's on that bottom question. line, yeah, they might say it's not even worth it for us to like finish these stories for another season. That's not getting us enough anyway. Better to invest in the properties or a new property or something that could right. actually get us more. It, it, it most likely is a decision like that because I mean, that's the way it goes. That's yeah. the crazy thing about like, Media and entertainment, filmmaking, TV making is the combination of like business executives, money, bottom yeah. line, and creatives, the people that are actually making up the things. And the, so that combination, like, and that's what you actually get is some form of combination of the creative and the one takes over the other. Uh oh. Chris is froze up a little bit. He'll be back. We'll get him back here in a second. He's in a, he's in a uh, portal right now. We're going to get a multi version, multiverse version of Chris that's going to come out of the portal. We don't know which version, which Earth, of which Earth Chris is going to be, which version of Chris is going to be coming back. But we're going to get one of the Chris Cassidy's, I hope, back, so we can finish out the show. Chris, are you there? Oh man, maybe I I could might have to finish this show. I've never had this happen. Chris, are you there? Okay, let me, uh, okay. I remove him. I oh, he's, I told everyone you froze up for a second. So I kept talking. I realized you had frozen. I said, you know, Chris has gone into the portal. We don't know which multiverse multiverse version of Chris is going to come out. It may be a different Chris from a different earth. Was it, is this a different Chris? Do you remember doing this show with me about the streaming wars? Yeah, right. This is Earth 23, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, uh, the only Earth. <laughs> you were doing a food show. You were doing a food live, uh, live, uh, live stream about food 
like re- you were doing a recipe show, weren't you? On your earth. absolutely stewed so, Jawas. I love it. I love. It. <laughs> okay, let's get into agree or disagree. As we got Chris back from the multiverse in the from the portal, number one in agree or disagree on this episode of Thunder Pop, whatever episode it is, we got some agree or disagree music. All right. Okay, here he goes. Number one. Talking about James Bond. We're talking about Amazon Prime. It has all the monies. A James, the James Bond writer, one of the James Bond writers is worried that Amazon will turn 007 into an MCU-style franchise. Do you agree or disagree that this is a valid warning? Um... I don't. The James Bond is kind of its own franchise. I think it's kind of like. I doubt they would try and do like an extended James Bond universe that they would try and keep going over multiple years because they work better in single installments or maybe like a trilogy installments, but then like you pick a new person to play the role of James Bond because it's just about James Bond. It's not like there's a host of other secret agents and we need to like, Oh, 007 working with 005 and Oh, number 13 and da, 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 da. no, like he has his cast of characters. That's the thing with comic book movies. There's like tons of superheroes and tons of stories and tons of things. Great. James Bond is James Bond. It's the story of James Bond. So if that's something they try to do, we'll be warned. It'll probably go the same way as that, shared monster universe that they tried to start i think like universal i maybe tried to do at some point with like oh, yeah. oh dracula and wolfman and blah 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 and i was just they like started, nobody start, yeah nobody wants that nobody oh. wants that nobody cares on how dracula met swamp thing in your extended universe but oh. just make a dracula reboot or a Swamp Thing reboot. Just make a Dracula movie. Because that's be, yeah. what they are. They're not shared. They're their own things. James yeah. Bond is his own thing. Let yeah. him be his own thing. Number two, uh, we're getting into Marvel. And by the way, MCU Monday, this Monday, check it out on the Geek News Now channel. Marvel, Black Widow finally coming out. But let me ask you about Loki, because Loki's coming out too. Loki's coming out first. In that trailer, I know you've watched it over and over again for the the, uh, the Loki trailers that have been put out. Is that Black Widow that everybody's speculating that they see in that trailer? Do you agree or disagree that that's Black Widow? I think it's highly doubtful. Um, it could be, but I'm pretty sure they've said that it's Lady Loki. Lady There's going to be yeah. Lady like Loki that. in this show. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely think it was one of the, it was their intention to make people think of Black Widow. So it did, yeah. if you were like, is that Black Widow? That's exactly what they were going for. They put it on that like purpley, whatever planet. We don't even know. Right. She's got the hairstyle, but I'll tell you why it's, it, that's if she has that shortcut hairstyle like that when black widow died on vormir she actually had her longer hair it was uh, red yeah. and then yeah. white at the end because it was still died from infinity war so it was longer it should be longer than that and i just think it it was just something to make people go oh they did that which on i did i did yeah. that i mean yeah all oh, a bunch of us were doing I mean, the whole well that's underworld. that's what marvel does on mcu yeah. mondays oh, we yeah. call it yeah we we call it the boner alert b-o-h-n-e-r for ralph yeah. boner from wandavision who everyone was like look there's pietro uh that's quicksilver from the fox this is the x-men cr- this is it and then they were like Haha, ralph oh. boner it's a boner joke we actually have a graphic it's called the boner oh, yeah. alert. we're I gonna start seen, selling this. t-shirts yeah I've seen this. mcu yes. mondays and so another boner alert would be like when they had the hulk uh in the trailer for infinity war running yeah. on the battlefield of wakanda and then that was never in the movie and they were like yeah we just filmed that to fake people out and i was like yeah. that's just a lie that's a deliberate lie <laughs> Yeah. Boner yeah. alert. Boner alert. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. This is another thing that might, it gives me a boner is 
more Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones 5. Oh, so Indy. Big fan. Okay, so, so Shia time, LaBeouf in this one? I, I doubt it. <laughs> uh, I actually, I actually did about three years ago. I did a YouTube video on what I think they should do, should do with Indiana Jones Five. It's on the Thunder Pop YouTube channel. Check it out. It's back a little bit. It's been a while since I made it. But my theory was, or my uh, pitch was for the idea, the story was to kill, uh, kill his son off at the very beginning of the movie, like where he if he gets killed off off camera, mm. but make that what sets the plot up. Where Indiana, Indiana Jones, yeah, the motivation for his character for Indiana Jones to come out of retirement, um, to do something, kind of get his mind off the loss of his son, and it would be used as a plot point, kind of a way to start the story. So I don't know if they'll do that, but that's a way to get rid of, to to do away with Shia, which I know they don't. He doesn't want to do any more Indiana Jones. They probably don't want to do any more Shia, and they're trying to disconnect a little bit from Indiana Jones four. I'm sure. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> in, in trying. Well, anyway, here's my question, though, related to Indiana Jones 5. Now, we know that this is going to be the first movie that Steven Spielberg and George Lucas aren't going to be directing or producing and directing. Um, but James Mangold, Logan, is has stepped in to take over, and they're going to start filming in just a few days. We've already mm -hmm. seen some pictures online of, of some of the sets. Um, but here's my question. As great a director as James Mangold is and what he's done, like with Logan, um, was he the right choice? Do you agree or disagree with that choice for Indiana Jones? And, and I'll play devil's advocate. We were talking about live action Disney remakes. Another good example, Dumbo. They did a live action remake of Dumbo and they did, they real brazen, very ballsy to get Tim Burton to do Dumbo. Um, because Tim Burton has his own style. It's, it's great, but it's, he has his own style and Dumbo is a really old IP. It's an old IP. When I think of Dumbo, my parents still love Dumbo, and they All went those, uh, racist crows. Well, yeah, there's that's, that's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's an old, it's an old it's ass an old yeah. IP. Yeah, I know. I it's kidding. an old ass IP. But yeah, my parents they went and saw Dumbo. They went and saw the movie. They were excited. They love Danny DeVito. They love Michael Keaton. They went and saw it, and I was worried about it beforehand. I was like, Are they going to like it because it's Tim Burton? Are they going to be able to handle Tim Burton? And they came back, and I remember their complaint is like that was the that was so weird. It was so dark and gross, and they didn't like it. Mm -hmm. So James Mangold, we know him from Logan, and yeah. Indiana Indiana Jones, another old IP. Now I know it's not as old as Star Wars, but when I think of Indiana Jones, I think of it as being an older IP than even Star Wars because it's an IP that's rode the shoulders of Harrison Ford from the yeah. from from all all the way through. The difference between uh, Dumbo and Indiana Jones is the audience it's intended for. Yeah, Dumbo is supposed to be for kids, even younger yeah. kids. And there's parts that's scary <laughs> and when you're a kid in the animated Dumbo. I thought I was scared when the crazy oh, yeah. drunkenness started going on. Like, that was crazy yeah. stuff. Oh, it's, it's creepy as hell. Yeah. It's, oh, but it's as scary. more of an adult, and that's the thing, the Dumbo, when they made that new, that was more for adults. That wasn't for like, take your kids. That, no, this is like a freak out Tim Burton Dumbo thing. Yeah. The And that's different. That's different than Indiana Jones, who's always intended to be. He is a man's man. You know, he gets the girl, he's an action hero, and he's an action hero. Right. And it's made for more, not for children, but more like uh oh. Adults. He's in the middle of the yard. Sorry. Yeah. Was a, All right, we got, we got um, back. back from the but portal. maybe more like maybe more like kids, but like teens and adults, like that's for you know, it's a he's going out, he's fighting Nazis, he's doing all he's shooting people, he's just, you know, he's getting the artifact. It's an action adventure movie, more along the lines of that type of thing than something that's like, oh, let's put on a tape for the kids. Yeah. Um, so it's for a little bit more adults. So when you have that character, and now I think James Mangold to answer your question is uh, um a great choice. Look what he did with Logan. That was the story of this guy who's past his prime, his last adventure. That could very likely be what they're literally why they got him for this movie. I doubt Harrison Ford wants to come back for another indie movie after this. I figure the only way they got him to sign on was by saying, 
you can die. <laughs> you think he dies? Think I've he been dies. seeing a lot of people well, thinking that he's going to die. Like this is well, his last. Reason, the only reason I'm not sure. So that they the, can then reboot it. Well, yeah. There's someone that. who's not Harrison Ford. Well, here's or the Shia thing, LaBeouf. though. If you quit the, the, if you were to debate that, you would look at the Indiana Jones, the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles from the, I think it was the night it was out in the nineties, and that show, in that show, the old Indiana, the old Indiana Jones appears. It's not Harrison Ford; it's another actor being the old elderly Indiana Jones, and he's missing an eye. He's got an eye patch at that point in time, but he's still alive, um, telling the story of his life, like later. Like after the last Indiana Jones stories, he's around to tell so, the story of his life. I didn't even know there was an Indiana Jones show. So that that would be. Do the, you think they're gonna re, like try and remain canonical to that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how loyal they'll be if they'll connect it to the thing. Mm. If, but uh, there's some theories. Some theories have said that they would. If Spielberg was involved in the series. Uh, he, he produced, but he didn't direct. But he was involved in the series. But if. Um, uh, some people have had the theory, well, he'll lose his eye in this one, and then that will be like where we saw him later telling a story with the eye patch on. So could be. I mean, I happens. guess that depends on how faithful they want to stay to their like to me. That just sounds like I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I love the expanded universe, but they threw that right out the freaking window when they did the sequel trilogy. Why should they feel any compunction to you know? unless they actually care about what fans of the IP think, why would you do that? Why would you care about what right. the people paying for your product think? Yeah. yeah so who knows? Show. Maybe they will, yeah. maybe they will, but I've seen them. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to find out exactly, but I could definitely see them going the route of killing Harrison for it off. I mean, that's why he agreed to be in the latest star Wars. Right. So he was just like, make sure I never have to come back. Um, he's, I don't, I don't know. Well, maybe he's things. maybe he likes Indiana Jones better than Han Solo. I've always heard he did. I've always heard he did. I could it, believe it. that. Yeah. yeah. Now here's the thing, on the um, with Indiana Jones, they can now have a section on the if that happens and he does he does die in this one, they could have a Disney Plus section with all movies that Harrison Ford characters have died in. There'd be at least two movies to put in that section, and then Disney, Disney Plus, yeah, Disney we section. kill Harrison Ford. This movie would be the old Indiana Jones Chronicles, <laughs> the old ass Indiana Jones Chronicles. And, and how does that how does that work? Is he gonna be? Is he gonna be? Is it too old for it to even work now? Or do you think it's it's they can pull it off? I think I don't know what they're gonna do with this movie. Um, I'm kind of surprised that it's even happening. Yeah. I'll my compass will kind of be the trailer. Yeah. I don't know really what to expect from it until that. Just like right. I had no idea what to expect from the Indiana Jones movie right. before. And then I saw it and I was just like, I think everyone kind of was like, well, <laughs> what? well, it had some, I mean, it, yeah, it had some, the, the whole, the whole thing with the animated uh, little critters that for me, it was, it was such a small thing. Why did you put that in there? You want to talk about getting carried away with your CGI? Oh, like, oh, look, I'm the new Indiana Jones, and that's why I'm leaping through the forest with the, the monkeys. Yeah, and the silly monkey that thing. That was never a thing, all right? Yeah. <laughs> so, the, the swinging, the whole Here's the, the ants, and the, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, and it was not the and I best didn't even I didn't even CGI. mind. I don't, yeah, and I don't, I don't think Shia, Shia was the best choice, and Shia's a great actor. But I don't know if he was the best choice to be believable enough as uh, Indy's son, but it, yeah. it was fine. It wasn't the worst offense of that movie. There were, no. there were other things to me that were much worse. The actual script story wise was fine. I liked the setting, the backdrop of the 1950s and using that. Uh, apparently this will be in the sixties. So, so I do like that. We're going to get some fresh, you know, the, the director's he's, he's got, he's proven himself. So, uh, Give it a try. We'll give it a try and see, see what happens. Okay. It's about time to get off. I'm going to be going to have dinner. I've been conflicted. Back when I was a single man during my single days and I would go out on the town, I used to, you know, have a conflict when I was out, you know, looking kind of out on the prowl for the ladies. I used to be conflicted. Am I a nice girl, girl next door? Or do I want a bad girl? 
like the bad girl. Which one is which one am I? And now being, you know, married, settled down at home, I have a similar conflict, but not over women. It's over food. And this is my life now. You know, I'm at home and it's like, you know, a Friday night or a Thursday night, and like we order out. We don't feel like cooking. Do I order out junk food or healthy food? And like tonight, I'm having the same conflict. I'm like, I'm either going to get Tex Mex. And I want it to be super decadent. I want it to be loaded with cheese. I want it to be layered. I want it to have extra lard and extra fat. Or do I go with something? Do I, do I go health food? A nice healthy bowl. So that's like the nice girl next door. And it's like the bad girl. Like which one? Same thing with food. I'm having the same conflict now. Am I the, am I the bad girl of food? The indulgent, the decadence? Or am I the nice girl next door that's going to, you know, Make me feel more, you know, I don't know. Where am I going with this? I, I have no idea where I'm going with this. I came up with this literally before we started the show, like literally, you know, minutes before we started the show. But is there is there sort of a comparison here that makes sense? And comparing the well, two? Well, I see where you're going with it. And for some I always go for the terrible choice. And maybe that's where my life is in where both, it's at right both, now. It's like, like, in both I areas. need to start going. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking maybe I need to start going for the healthy choice. And not the bad girl, but uh, can't help it. Yeah. <laughs> I like what I like. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's late. And I'm pretty hungry. So I could see myself going, going bad girl of food, going decadent, going, you know. <laughs> I'm even worse. What's around? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. That's, There's that near, that's, and see, that's nearby. Those, those two, you know, those two things, the later it gets. Well, what's up? What's around? What's left? What's oh, man. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, there you go. Well, that's my thoughts and advice for you. I don't know what I'm... maybe I'll I'll go somewhere in the middle, like a little bit bad, a little bit naughty when it comes to food. Goldilocks. But also a little good. Sure. Also a little little healthy. So maybe I'll have no cheese on my text max. Not too hot, not too cold. Yeah, no, no cheese on the Just text mix. Right. No, no cheese on the text mix tonight. You know, funny story. I live in Texas, and we have a lot of good text mix in Texas. But the closest I've ever been to your area of the country was Virginia. A couple of years ago, I was there. For, <laughs> I was there for my old job, and I, for some reason, decided I wanted uh, Mexican food in the state of Virginia. Why I don't know because I'm not. It's not known as the hotbed of Mexican food. No, but it's I not. Found, I found a place somewhere. I don't know what city or town it was that had New Mexico style Mexican food. <laughs> it was pretty good. Being from Texas, good. I was actually surprised. It was not bad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the 148th, I think, or something, something episode, or maybe it was 49, but it was, a, it was an episode of the Thunder Pop show. Streaming Wars 2021. Chris Cassidy, catch him this Monday on Marvel Mondays, MCU Mondays. At what time, sir? 9 30 eastern on geek news now search geek news now and we give away stuff so there's monthly giveaways anyway but we're working on actually give, doing a giveaway every show so oh man. if you want to get a boner alert t-shirt you better start tuning in <laughs> Go over there to get those prizes on monday oh and how one more thing i meant to put this me up when we were doing agree disagree how ironic is it that uh, that uh, Jeff Bezos, who sort of, mm. I'm still, let's be honest, kind of resembles a Bond Dr. villain, a, a Bond, yeah. an actual Bond villain, is now sort of the center of James Bond fans' um, stress and anger right now. There's an irony to that. I almost, well, think I mean, bought, I almost think he bought the IP so he could be a villain in the movie and bring it all full circle. Well, he should do that. I mean, it's meta. <laughs> There's a billionaire trying to take over the world, and he's just like they're stroking it. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> it's like what? way to go! You did it. Um, but I'm in the movie. I mean, I, the I Bond the movie. movie that haven't even come out yet is apparently passing on the title of 007 to like the black woman or whatever. That's yes, I've heard that. Yes, yeah, that. Theory okay. or speculation. Well, yeah. here's the thing. Like when we were talking about how 
it's not like a giant cast of characters. It's James Bond. Let him be James Bond. James yeah. Bond is not a black woman. He's not going to teach men how to be more respectful towards women. That's not what he's there for. Mm -hmm. And not all women want a guy who's totally like some chicks like a James Bond type guy, a take charge, super in shape, nice car having dude mm -hmm. that there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, so it's another case of things being taken too far. It's like you, there's a certain point where it's not James Bond anymore. I don't care if who you put the 007 title on. It's like, well, the reasons that people showed up for the archetype of James Bond no longer exist in this character or are so far removed that it might as well be a different character. Why don't you just make a different character? Oh, because you wanted to use the well-knowedness of that title. Just like when they did the Ghostbusters reboot, Ghostbusters 2016. Is it Ghostbusters? I mean, in the sense that we're using the name Ghostbusters and it's loosely based around the plot, but do we care about it any more than that other than as a vehicle for like this other thing? No, we don't. And then we wonder why the movie does bad. Cause it's like, Hey, stop being like crappy panderers and give me the story that I came here to see. I didn't mind the female Ghostbusters. What I, what I had a problem with was <sighs> that their decision not to connect it to the original universe and just pretend that didn't exist when that was so iconic. And when you had the actors there on at the studio, you know, on set working and willing to be in a Ghostbusters movie, they all were there. They could have used them in a story. So they could have those, those women that were the Ghostbusters in this movie could have been the daughters of the original Ghostbusters. Yeah, but that would have been fine. That would have been, that would have been how you do it. And then you would have had less people upset about it because it would have connected and you could have had the, the originals in there as well in there more but it looks like they're riding the ship the new one is doing something kind of like that it looks like they are and they're actually yeah. connecting it and that's the thing well the reason that didn't work with the 2016 was because it was just a gender swap yeah it didn't, that's it literally didn't. what it was it was People like let's take original. the male characters and make them female and let's take the female character and make it a guy and then people will love it because People prefer original universe connection. Cobra Kai has been the perfect example of that. Look how yeah. well that did because they had the creativity and the willingness well, because to put time into it. You're yeah. basing it on that name, on that yeah. IP. Yeah. For you to then ignore everything, that's the reason people liked it. Embrace it, okay? I guarantee yeah. you, you'll do better, aka The Mandalorian, aka Cobra Kai, you know? That's right. what happens when you actually respect the original source material, which is why a lot of the people are showing up in the first place. Yes. If yes, if you're doing a reboot or whatever, know that the fans are going to be there. That's why it was so hilarious with the uh, Powerpuff Girls live action that got scrapped. And they're like, well, we're rewriting everything. And I'm just like, your problem isn't with the writing. Okay. It is. I saw those scripts. It's wow. trash, wow. but your problem is the fact that you're trying to do an adult live action Powerpuff Girls. The Powerpuff Girls worked because it was animated cartoon girls with superpowers. Freaky in the fact that like they didn't even have hands, like they didn't have fingers. They literally had little fists that stuck to things and they brought that up in the show. They were like, how do you pick stuff up? I don't know. Things just stick to our, because they're little freaky superpowered beings so to then make them live uh -oh. live action with like it's weird it's crazy it doesn't make any sense yeah. your problem with a live action powerpuff girls thing is the fact that it's a live action powerpuff girls thing well let's see and that's a good example of like we're, the ips are running thin they're having to dig deep to figure out what they're going to try to do live action to be able to fill a platform with some content and some bring in more familiar, some continuing familiarity, which they feel safe distributing. So anyway, Chris Cassie, thank you so much, sir. Everybody out there have a great hour, day, millisecond, month, year, whatever. Thank you. Good night. We'll see you soon. It's time for the outro.
Thunder Pop is a Hit the Bricks production.